Ray Tanner is set to hire former LSU head baseball coach and current retiree Paul Maneri as the Gamecocks' new head coach. Some South Carolina fans are concerned about that, but you shouldn't be. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I'm Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast and formerly a staff writer for Gamecock Digest over on Fan Nation. Thank y'all so much for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch for your team here today. We are free and available both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. And that's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team, both faster and for free. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash college. Terms and conditions do apply. What a Monday for South Carolina Gamecock fans. We may finally be getting an answer to the Gamecocks baseball coaching search as some reports came out late on Monday afternoon, I believe first from Teddy Cahill of Baseball America, that the Gamecocks are set to hire or have targeted former LSU head coach and national champion, by the way, Paul Maneri to be the next leader of their baseball program. And combine that with the fact that now... South Carolina's board trustees, the universities that is, is set to meet on Tuesday afternoon, I want to say, at about 4 o'clock to approve multiple athletic contracts. It seems like that this is indeed going to happen. Nobody saw this coming, and I mean literally nobody. And while, yes, likely South Carolina would not have Paul Maneri for long should everything be finalized here because Maneri is currently 66 years old. I think it's quite clear what the plan is by bringing Paul Maneri into this program. Again, assuming that they work everything out with his contract and everything. So, as I mentioned earlier, Paul Maneri, he has a lengthy track record in college baseball. Former LSU head coach, won over 1,500 career games as a coach, won the national championship with the Tigers back in 2009, and was with LSU all the way up until the 2021 season. That season, admittedly, was a bit of a down year for the Tigers, but also Paul Maneri was dealing with some serious health issues. He had some real migraine problems that he needed to uh, take care of, and so he stepped away from the game in order to get his health back in order, and Apparently, based on some of the rumblings that are coming out now, uh, it seems like Paul Maneri has been itching to get back into college baseball for a good while now. And him and Ray Tanner, they both know each other quite well, obviously faced off as competitors several times on the baseball diamond the past 15, 20 years or so. And, uh, you know, Ray Tanner also knows uh, Skip Berkman, the legendary former head coach and athletic director over at LSU as well. So to get back to what exactly is Ray Tanner going for here? Paul Maneri is going to turn 67, I believe, this coming August. So obviously he'll be that age right as the baseball season set to get underway in 2025. If you asked me, what is your opinion? How long do you think Paul Maneri would stick around in Columbia? I would give Paul Maneri probably five to seven years max. Needless to say, I don't think that he would stick around for very long. Some people have referred to this as a Lou Holtz or Steve Spurrier type situation. I think it's more Lou Holtz than anything else, purely in the sense that you're not going to expect him to stick around for long. The difference being, obviously, the football program was in utter shambles when Lou Holtz took over. The baseball program is not in utter shambles. As a matter of fact, the pedigree of the program is probably a big reason why Paul Maneri took this job in the first place, or excuse me, is expected at this current point in time to take the job. Now, the other thing about, you know, the whole conversation regarding Paul Maneri's age is this. I want some of you Gamecock fans to remember, those of you who are bringing up the age, Ray Tanner, again, he is not a bumbling fool that a lot of fans make him out to be. I get it. The track record in terms of some of his hires 
has not gone well for him. And one of those hires includes former baseball coach Mark Kingston. We can debate that all day long. But let's not sit here and act like Ray Tanner just brought Paul Maneri into his office or more than likely maybe had a couple phone conversations and just said, you know, I'm just going to hire you on the spot. Ray Tanner could have done that, but more than likely, Ray Tanner probably did what he has done throughout this entire process based on how long this has taken, and that is do his due diligence. Okay, if Ray Tanner wanted to finish this thing up in two, three days, he probably could have, but he didn't. So I would venture to guess that Ray Tanner has had extensive talks with Paul Maneri about the fact that he is in his upper 60s. And obviously, they would need to have a plan in place if they indeed hire him. Now, as far as why Paul Maneri might have been Ray Tanner's guy, I mentioned earlier, these two go way back as far as knowing one another. And what I think the goal here is, is this. Obviously, Gamecock fans want to see the baseball team get back to Omaha. And Paul Maneri, look, he took LSU to the College World Series, I believe, five or six times. And again, won a national championship. And very rarely do you have an opportunity to bring a national championship winning coach into your baseball program. College baseball, a lot of these coaches get comfortable in their current spot. And they don't want to exactly pick up and move. They like to stay put. So this was a rare opportunity that South Carolina was able to, it seems capitalize on but the reason I bring all this up is this Paul Maneri and Ray Tanner they're around the same age therefore you could say the both of them likely share a lot of similar feelings regarding the sport of baseball the mentality you got to bring to the baseball diamond every day you go out there to play to practice Ray Tanner was a very cerebral coach he showed that in his later years especially after he accumulated a bunch of experience at South Carolina and got a bunch of experience in the postseason and in the College World Series but Ray Tanner also obviously was a very hard coach he was hard on his players he asked a lot out of his guys and what has been said the past couple years from people that know a lot more about South Carolina's baseball program than I do, former players, guys that maybe still talk about the team, that used to be on the team, what's been said by multiple people is that, you know, this team does not have the same toughness it once used to have. And um, I'm just putting words in their mouth here when I say this, but you could probably argue that some of these teams that they've had the past five, six, seven years, they have rode the coattails of old teams, teams that actually did a lot of great things in the one season that they had together, went to Omaha, competed for national championships. And South Carolina needs to bring that gritty, tough mindset back. I believe Paul Maneri has been brought in, or excuse me, is expected to be brought into Columbia to create that culture once again, to ask a lot out of these guys. You look at Paul Maneri, you could see him being the guy where it's like, hey, one moment, he could be like almost a loving grandfather-like figure to a very young player. But the next minute, he could be the hardest person on you as far as maybe a mistake you just made out there on the field. So being a baseball lifer, I think that Ray Tanner believes Paul Maneri could absolutely do that if he brings him into the fold. Now, I know that for some people, culture, again, is one thing. The championship pedigree, okay. But what about the fact that he's been retired for the last two, three years? This is a new era of college baseball, college sports as a whole. You've got NIL you got to deal with. you got the portal era now that you have to deal with. And also, hey, despite all of his accolades, it doesn't change the fact he's going to be 67 at the start of this next baseball season. That's going to be used against South Carolina on the recruiting trail. How on earth are they going to combat this? Well, they might be able to combat this based on the potential staff that they could have under Paul Maneri. We'll talk about that potential staff in a few moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. 
Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs because LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team both faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So in other words, if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free today. Terms and conditions do apply. Welcome back to this Monday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. We cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day. And as always, a big thank you to each and every one of you everydayers who make the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your first listen, wherever you get your audio podcasts daily, or your first watch on YouTube. All right, let's talk about the potential staff that South Carolina could have if they hire Paul Maneri officially on Tuesday afternoon. Now, Some Gamecock fans wanted to see interim head coach Monty Lee get the full-time gig. And, you know, I can understand it. Monty Lee, he clearly is a Gamecock. Sure, he might not graduate from South Carolina, but the man has been at South Carolina for a very long time. He knows the state very well. He is basically a, a Gamecock son, even though, again, he did not actually go to South Carolina. You don't see that very often. So, For Monty Lee to get that kind of recognition and love from the fan base speaks volumes to the kind of person and coach that he is. But obviously, at this point, looks like Monty Lee, he is not going to get the head coaching job here. But if you wanted him to, and you also like the pulmonary hire, you might be getting the best of both worlds here. Because based on reports from Chris Clegg of Rotoballer and also D1Baseball.com founder and owner Kendall Rogers... South Carolina is looking to keep Monty Lee on their staff. Rogers specifically stated that keeping Lee on the staff will, quote, take some work, end quote. But the Gamecocks want to make this happen. This goes back to what I said earlier about how I think South Carolina has got a plan here with bringing in Paul Maneri. So I talked about Paul Maneri. Listen, he brings championship pedigree. Obviously, I think he is going to be a similar coach to Ray Tanner, so he's going to bring that toughness aspect back to South Carolina's dugout and their locker room as a whole. And I think all that's very important. And he's going to bring a couple of other things that I'll mention later on when we talk about all the boxes the pulmonary hire would check off. But going back to Monty Lee for a second. Monty Lee is a guy that... Everyone knows here. He knows the state of South Carolina at the back of his hand. He is a really good recruiter, a great recruiter, you could say. Uh, A lot of players love him. He is clearly a player's coach. And the other thing is this. Monty Lee is only 47 years old. So, sure, he might not be super young compared to like a Josh Elan or Tennessee who's 33 years old. But it's not like he is in the twilight of his career like, admittedly, a pulmonary is at going on 67 later this fall. So, Monty Lee, in my opinion, he is going to be the head coach in waiting. And I think South Carolina is trying to sell that to him right now. Like, look, we're not giving you the full gig right now, but if you stay on this staff, work under Paul Maneri, not going to say learn some things from Paul Maneri, but I think clearly you could pick up a couple things from a guy that has had that much success in this game then in four or five years, when Maneri is ready to hang it up fully for good, then Monty, it's your show. It's your program, and you can pick up the mantle right where Paul Maneri left it. I think that is the pitch that South Carolina is probably trying to give him, and you can see why Monty Lee would be a bit hesitant, because does Monty want to really wait potentially five, six, seven more years before becoming the head coach? How does he feel about the fact that, you know, He didn't get hired this time around. Instead, Ray, again, quite literally got a buddy of his pretty much out of retirement. As great as Paul Maneri has been in his career, 
to likely become the next head coach here. That's going to hurt anybody's pride, no matter how much you love a place, how much you love an organization or a program. So you have to imagine that's hurt Monty Lee a little bit. So he's going to need time to digest all of this. How much time? You know, who knows? It could only take him maybe 24 hours for him to flush it all and say, okay, I'm fine with it. Let's work something out and I'll stay on the staff. But needless to say, if Monty Lee stays on the staff, even though he's not going to be the full-time head coach, that would be a huge win for South Carolina for a bevy of reasons. Now, I mentioned recruiting earlier. Let's stick with that theme with the other guy that reportedly is going to be brought onto the staff. Former LSU pitching coach and current director of program development and recruiting for the Tigers, Terry Rooney. Now, this is a pulmonary guy. Terry Rooney was the pitching coach for LSU in 2007 and 2008. And he was also the recruiting coordinator at that time in terms of the actual coaching staff, the on-field coaching staff. Rooney brought in the number one class in the country for LSU in the 2008 cycle. That class obviously played a big role in the Tigers winning the 2009 National Championship in college baseball. Currently, for the 2024 cycle, the Tigers have the number two class in the country, according to Perfect Game. And here's some numbers that are going to make your eyes about pop out. They have 10 top 100 prospects. Most teams have anywhere from, say, two to four. A couple have five plus. No one else has 10 or more. LSU is the only program that has it. The average player rating usually goes from a scale of 1 to 10. LSU's recruiting class is literally so good that perfect game scale broke in terms of their player rate. Their average player rating is 10.74. Both of those marks are the best in college baseball for the 2024 high school recruiting cycle. Now, I'm not going to say that that's all because of Terry Rooney, but clearly... This guy knows how to recruit. This guy knows how to get talent brought into a program. So you combine that with Monty Lee and his knowledge and background of the state of South Carolina. This is a ton of firepower as far as bringing in talent is concerned. So if you were worried about recruiting, maybe transport recruiting on top of that, with Palmineri potentially being hired here, Monty Lee and Terry Rooney being your top two assistant coaches, which, by the way, you can have a third on top of that, that covers all those bases right then and there. And the other thing I didn't mention about Monty Lee that I want to bring up before we move on here, a lot of players, again, voice their support of Monty Lee in this search process. That includes some current players, a Cole Messina, who even, through a retweet of his on X, has hinted that, hey, he would consider potentially coming back if Monty was the head guy, or I guess maybe was even still here, to maybe play with his brother Carson, a very good pitching prospect out of Somerville High School. Speaking of Carson, his teammate, P.J. Morlando, considered one of the best power hitters in the entire country for the 2024 class, basically the top commit for South Carolina, he also you know, has endorsed Lee heavily. And I'm not going to say basically has stated he would come here, but the chances would be a lot higher if Lee sticks around Columbia. So if you keep Monty on staff, it's a big deal as far as player retention is concerned. And I will admit this, even though I was never a fan of the idea of making Monty Lee the full-time head coach at South Carolina, if Monty Lee sticks around on this staff, your team next year will automatically be better for it. Paul Maneri will not be working from behind the eight ball in year one. They will have a lot of guys on this current team come back because they trust Monty, they love Monty, and they would even have a chance, I say a chance, to bring in maybe some of their top prospects for the 2024 recruiting class to campus because Monty's still on the staff. And likely would get all the titles that he would want. Associate head coach, you know, maybe recruiting coordinator, although I think Terry Rooney's probably going to get that one. A hitting coach, maybe just make him the lone hitting coach again, because clearly um, that experiment of having two hitting coaches this past season did not work out very well, Mark Kingston. So that would be a star-studded staff. 
if you ask me. Now, as far as player development goes uh, in terms of pitching with Terry Rooney, he sent 14 pitchers to the big leagues, which I assume means to the actual MLB level, and 20 of his pitching prospects have been drafted in the first 10 rounds. So Rooney has done well in terms of player development, I would say, but his calling card is mainly bringing players into your program. So this would be a really, really solid start to your staff. And again, you would still have one final slot. So could you bring a Landon Powell from North Greenville? Then he could be maybe an associate head coach in waiting. You see where I'm going with that? You could get the best of all worlds here. You have a national championship winning coach leading your program, Monty Lee, basically being the right-hand man for him, head coach in waiting. Landon Powell comes in and, hey, Landon, you don't have to worry about recruiting quite as much as the other guys do. You don't even have to be the associate head coach, which I'm sure involves a lot more responsibilities than, say, a regular assistant. You just focus on, let's say, catchers and defense in the infield. And bam, you've got your staff right there as far as on-field coaches. Now, as far as this hire is concerned, mentioned earlier, some fans are definitely concerned about the age, and I hear you on that. But when you consider the possibility of Paul Maneri coming to South Carolina, this hire would check off almost every single box that you would have on a list for a prospective coach you wanted in this search. We'll discuss all those boxes in a few moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Summertime means baseball, the NBA Finals, and more. And you can bet it all on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 that you can use to bet everything from the Finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the park. The Boston Celtics right now are making pretty easy work of the Dallas Mavericks in the NBA Finals. Currently up two games to none as they're set to play their first game in Dallas, I believe, later this weekend. So if you think that Boston's going to run away with this series, sweep the Mavericks even, FanDuel currently has the odds set at plus 270 which is only the second lowest in terms of potential monetary gain. So, you're looking to make a bit of extra cash? That might be a good prop bet to put some money on. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day in just 30 minutes. All right. Talking about the big picture here of a likely, at this point, Paul Maneri hire here for South Carolina, this hire would check off every single box that I think pretty much every fan had on their list heading into this coaching search process. Number one, re-energize the fan base. Pretty clear at the end of last season, this fan base for the first time in several years was just extremely apathetic. Weren't looking forward to baseball series like they used to, even when this team was in contention for a potential top eight national seed. Let's not forget that. At one point, with about, I think, three or four weeks left in the regular season, South Carolina was projected as a number 10 national seed. They were. And then they had a bit of a lackluster series win at Missouri. Then they got swept at Georgia. But in that series, yes, the game times were a bit off for that weekend. But South Carolina, quite frankly, just didn't show up all that much in each game. I'm not putting that on y'all, by the way. The way they played that whole weekend, um, you know, I can understand why some fans chose maybe to stay home for those games. But point here is this. Ray Tanner, I think, understood to a great degree, whoever he hired in this coaching search, he needed a hire that would get the fan base fired up again. And while he might be 66, going on 67 later this year, bringing in Paul Maneri absolutely energizes this fan base once again. You know why? 1,500 plus wins. NCAA National Championship. Multiple SEC titles. The man has done pretty much everything a coach could want in their respective college career. So, check off that box right there. Championship pedigree. Literally just mentioned it with Paul Maneri. Check off that box right there. Here's another one. Head coaching experience. This one looks at pretty much the entire staff. 
think about this. Let's just have a bit of fun here. Paul Maneri is your head coach, all right? Now, let's say they convince Monty Lee to stay on staff, and they basically give him a secret head coach-in-waiting title, all right? He's been a head coach. Terry Rooney, he's also been a head coach. And for the third final assistant role, let's just say for the fun of it, they throw Landon Powell on the staff because I know a lot of you love Landon And listen, I like Landon Powell too. Even though like Monty Lee, never thought he should get the head coaching job. But you throw him on there as kind of low end of the totem pole SEC assistant coach, which would give him good experience, allow him to adjust to this level as far as being a coach is concerned. Obviously a great player, but coaching's still a bit different, right? He's been a head coach at a D2 program, won a national title at that respective level. Which, carrying it over to being just a low end of the totem pole assistant coach, is pretty freaking good. Want to use another word, but I can't for this podcast. But, point here is this. You put together that kind of staff, my God, the amount of ideas these guys can bounce off of one another in meeting rooms on a whiteboard, the strategy that they could utilize... That would be one hell of a coaching staff right there. Head coaching experience. Check, check, quadruple check, depending on what the assistant coaching staff looks like. Recruiting prowess. I mentioned it earlier. Monty Lee, if he stays on the staff. Nobody knows the state better than that man. And then Terry Rooney. Guy literally has helped programs or a program win a national title because of his recruiting almost by itself. And... He's helping LSU continue to stack talent even at this current moment in time. Check, check, check again. By the way, recruits ask Palmineri about his age. All he's got to do is say, well, I got a ring right here. Matter of fact, I got all these rings over here on this other hand as well. You want to win some rings? I mean, that's recruiting pitch in and of itself. So this staff, again, none of this is official. I should keep that in mind. Paul Maneri, you still got to get a contract worked out for him. Last I checked before I recorded this show, that has not happened yet. Monty Lee, still need to work some things out there. Again, kind of probably smooth things over a little bit if we're being honest. Terry Rooney, seems pretty likely he's going to follow Paul Maneri over there to South Carolina because because of the relationship they've got. Um, This staff could be an absolute all-star staff. You talk about announcing to the rest of the SEC in college baseball, hey, we are not going to let the sport pass us by. We're not going to play that game. Uh Uh-uh. We are still one of the best programs in this gosh dang sport. And we plan on making it back to Omaha come hell or high water. We are coming. South Carolina did that today. Hiring a guy like Paul Maneri, again, even though it'll probably be like a Lou Holtz type deal where he stays somewhere between five to eight years, that speaks volumes. You know what that screams? That screams commitment. That screams we're dang near going to try to be back. Okay? I'm not going to say South Carolina's back yet. Let's win a Super Regional, make it back to Omaha. Then you could say, okay, South Carolina is back back. But Ray Tanner, he's trying his damn hardest, y'all. He is trying. So, in my opinion, great day for South Carolina's baseball program because they showed we ain't messing around anymore. We probably we messed around a little bit last time, and hey, they found out. That's what happens when you go for a young up-and-comer who, quite frankly, was not a bad coach at South Carolina, Mark Kingston, but probably was a little bit over his head, if we're being brutally honest here. That ain't going to be the case with Paul Maneri. So... I'm very excited to see how this hire works out. What are your thoughts on the hire? The potential coaching staff? All the boxes that it could check off? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section on YouTube. Or if you listen to this show on an audio podcast app, as always, shoot me a direct message at a line underscore SC on X. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your weekend. Before I go, really, really quickly... Um, if you, have, if you don't follow me on X, uh, I made an announcement on Monday. I have left Gamecock Digest. Good terms, by the way. Nothing bad happened between the both of us. Gamecock Digest was great to me, and I hope, obviously, the feeling is reciprocated, and I wish them the absolute best in the future. 
And um, in that same post, I also mentioned that I will eventually be leaving the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into it yet, but I just want to say I've enjoyed thoroughly the amount of time that we have spent together on this show, the relationship and the bond that we have created. And as I've always said, I know it sounds like a broken record. I would have never been able to do this without y'all's support. And I'm grateful for that. So... This isn't my last show by any means, by the way. I've still got plenty of shows left um, until my bosses uh, find someone that I know is going to do just as good, if not better, than me with what I've done here. So um, just wanted to let y'all know about all that. But with that having been said, that does it for today's show. Have a great rest of your Monday, and I'll be sure to catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.